You're listening to IRN, the Inception Radio Network, Chicago, Illinois. Supernatural Girls, real stories, real answers to life's biggest supernatural mysteries. And now for another exciting interview with paranormal experts from this world and others. Here's your host, paranormal researcher Patricia Baker, on the one, the only, Supernatural Girls. Welcome, everyone, to another exciting episode of Supernatural Girls Radio. I am your host, Patricia Baker, and I am here with my fabulous, magnificent co-host, Patricia Kirkman. PK, how are you tonight? Absolutely fabulous. All right. All right. So you haven't melted from that Tucson heat? No, I'm. we're drooling, waiting for this thunderstorm that's supposed to come through. Oh, boy. Praying it hits real fast. Oh, gosh. Well, I hope we can keep on the air with you and because we've got a great guest tonight. We're going to learn so much from Lisa Barnett. She is the author of The Infinite Wisdom of the Akashic Records. I want to be free of these records in my past. How about you? Huh. Can I, I would burn them if I knew how to get a hold of them. <laughs> <laughs> we both have a big bonfire, wouldn't we? <laughs> oh, God, isn't that the truth? But I will well, tell you, the book is fabulous. I've it, so it, enjoyed reading it. Yes, it's really excellent. And it's full of such helpful information. The whole audience is going to learn so much tonight. And it's all stuff that we can do and integrate into our lives right away, which is, that's why we wanted Lisa to come on the show, not to talk about so much the esoteric stuff, even though that's fascinating. But we want to know, how do we get free? How do we remove these blocks from our life? And that's what she's here to tell us. But before we bring Lisa on the show, we got a lot to talk about. Yes. First of all, for people who missed last week's show with Patrice Chaplin, my God, you guys got to go listen to that show. I am still reeling from everything Patrice said about the portals and Howard Hughes and the Stone Cradle. Oh, my goodness. Wasn't that wild? It was fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. We are so fortunate to have such fabulous people to be able to talk to. And that's why tonight I can't wait to talk to Lisa. In fact, I'm thinking about taking her book and sticking it in my purse as a pocket guide. Yeah, I think Maybe you it'll could keep do me that. out of trouble. Yes, definitely. But if there's anyone in the audience who missed last week, you can go right to SupernaturalGirls.com, and that's SupernaturalGirls with a Z, dot com, and you can just listen to the show right from there. We are archiving all of the shows that we are doing here on Inception Radio Network, and you can also access all of the shows we did prior to our new incarnation. So all the shows are available to you at any time at your convenience, and of course, we always like for you to join us live because then you can call in when the show is live. And the phone number to call is 888-919-2355. So if you have a question for Lisa tonight, the number to call is 888-919-2355. Now, when you go to SupernaturalGirls.com, be sure to sign up for the Fringe Files newsletter so that you can keep aware of everything we're doing, all the exciting guests we're going to be having. We have some real blockbuster shows coming up. All of our shows are terrific. We've got some real special things we'll be doing for the audience in the next couple of months. Don't miss it. It's going to be great. So, Pat- Patricia, Miss PK, what's going on with our numbers? What can we expect tomorrow? Well, tomorrow is going to be a fabulous day because it's going to all be about creativity communications of all forms and we're really going to be able to enjoy it because we've been a little sensitive today to many things but our creative side is excellent because we're also in a month that has a luck factor to it so this is going to double up between the month of the day anybody that's out shopping if you're thinking of investing or whatever know that you're probably uh, it's a good day for gambling let's put it that way 
Think of the Kenny Rogers song, The Gambler. And you can take a test drive on whatever you feel interested in, and I think the odds are you might be surprised. But if you don't feel it, don't do it. It's one of those things. Okay. Well, I always feel like buying that lottery ticket, but then you hurt my feelings so much when you told me that my chart said I would never win it. I was so disappointed. (laughs) Well, I just said in this lifetime, maybe in the next one. Well, maybe if I clear my Akashic records, I could win it. We're going to find out if that's possible. Maybe I can just change that reality because I I would love to. Wouldn't that be fun? I could quit my day job, but I wouldn't quit the radio show because I love it way too much. So I don't know. There's just so much going on in the world today with paranormal. And I wanted to share with everybody. Now, I shared this with you earlier, PK. This is a very strange mystery. There was a large face. We're talking mm-hmm. huge found carved into a remote Canadian Island. Now the thing's 40 feet up. You just can't even get to it. It's just, it's, it's out in the middle of nowhere on Reeks Island and somebody came upon it and they have no idea who put it there. This thing is ancient. They don't know how old it is because they can't get to it easily, but it looks kind of oriental in feature but they just don't know what the message is with this face. It's, it's another great mystery. And it makes me wonder, who are we really? You know, when you see things like that that may have been placed there thousands of years ago. And certainly, it kind of feeds into what we're talking about. Who are we really? Where do we come from? What kind of baggage are we carrying? What kind of messages can we get from these ancient people that were here so long before us? and our relatives, and our own Akashic records. There's so much information to be had, and we really need to get this figured out. There's just, it's, I'm on information overload. There is so much going on today with the paranormal. But let's bring Lisa on the show. Let's talk about these Akashic records. Now, Lisa is the founder of an institute And she is able to help people to learn how to access their own Akashic records. And I was reading all the testimonials where Lisa's been able to really help people get past financial blocks and all kinds of things. They were talking about the lottery there. I want to know about that. So she has a lot of prayers, the Akashic Knowing Wisdom Prayer System. And it just sounds like a beautiful and yet easy to use system. So we got to find out more. So Lisa, welcome to the show. Thank you, Patricia and Patricia. It's like a Patricia squared, huh? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> We're bookends. I can be bookends. <laughs> oh, lovely. Well, I'm really excited to be here with you two and to get to share this Akashic wisdom and information. So... What would you like to know? Well, first of all, I was really impressed with the fact that you were born awake. So you had an awareness from birth that you had been here before. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, my awareness was, well, I'm going to say I was more like three. So, I mean, that was my first realization. It was like I looked at my hands and I thought, holy moly, I'm trapped in a body again. And I could remember not being in a body. So a little bit less like... um, Yeah, it was I could remember being very this very etheric being. And the image I really had as this little child was of talking to two other beings or souls and not having to use this kind of arcane language that we use. So, of course, I'm three years old and I'm sure struggling with learning how to communicate with my parents, which triggered this memory like, This is such a challenge. Let me just go back. Let me go home. So I used to tell my mother, I just want to go back. I just want to go back. I don't want to do this. So that was my first memory. And um, now, did your mom know what you were talking about? Because you you were at home. You were at home. So you're saying, I want to go home. She was like, what in the world? (laughs) That's right. She'd say, you are home, honey. She was very sweet. And and I'm sure she probably went and read all the Dr. Spock books on how to deal with, you know. (laughs) But my parents were more scientific. So it was interesting when I used to tell them that there was somebody standing at the end of my bed. My mother decided to to tell me that it was it was just her father who was coming to watch over me, like just some ghost hanging out. I thought, well, I'm not sure that that was also, you know, reassuring. But (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, really. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Gee, but then, so you had this awareness from a very young age, obviously the age of three is what you said. And then you talked about in your book how by high school you found references to this in other books that had been written. And so that must have given you a feeling of comfort that you weren't alone. Yeah, it was amazing. I was very blessed to be living in California in the, uh, oh, I'm going to say it was the very late 60s or early 70s. And um, TM had really just come, Transcendental Meditation had just come to the United States. There were, I started reading a lot of, you know, kind of, um, books about Eastern spirituality, but Baba Ram Dass wrote Be Here Now. And there was a, a great book called Journeys Out of the Body by Robert Monroe. And so there was lots of people talking about all sorts of more esoteric things than had been popular, you know, just a few years earlier. Absolutely. In fact, I used to work for Bob Monroe. Did you really? He, yeah. I love him. Well, <laughs> He, he was great. He was an amazing genius who really paved the way for consciousness through sound. Just an amazing person. Yeah. So yes. I know it's one of the books also that piqued my interest probably about the same time you were reading it. I was reading it. So isn't that interesting? Yep. So here. Yep. Yeah. So here you had this a kind of a comfort level then that other people were talking about these things. But what led you to explore the Akashic Records? Well, that was a little bit later, I have to say, you know, just like most of us on any sort of spiritual path, it's, you know, a bit of a roller coaster. So I went on, I spent my teenage years reading all the esoteric information and, you know, experimenting with all of the, you know, interesting psychedelics of the world back there in San Francisco in the uh, 70s, right? Oh, hey, yeah. Gosh, right, you, right? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> tune in, um, drop out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. So luckily, I was just almost a little bit too young, you know, in, in some ways. So I didn't quite drop out yet. But um, I minored in philosophy in college. It was just a long, it was a long road. I was reading a Grateful Dead. I was at the first one of the first big Grateful Dead concerts right oh, here in, in Oakland. I see they're playing their last concert now, you know. Um, oh, how but funny. it's a long, strange trip it's been. There's absolutely no doubt. But it really wasn't until I was almost in my 40s when I was really doing intuitive readings and energy healing when I really had come full circle, had gone from the um, from, you know, studying and minoring in philosophy in college to going on to, you know, work in the more corporate world, advertising, marketing and such. So it wasn't again until I was in my 40s that I went back to my um, more spiritual roots and really started to work as a healer and an intuitive that I get these really big messages. And so to me, the difference was when I was being very psychic and doing a, a more psychic reading for a client, it felt that it was more related to this world, this life, this body. And then every once in a while, when I'd connect to somebody of a high vibration, I'd get this huge, expansive information. And, it, and I'd always, you know, feel like, wow, that was amazing. It was past lives and soul purposes and contracts that we had, soul contracts and and just, you know, a lot of the whys, you know, why would somebody have chosen this in their life, etc. So I would always think that was amazing. That was like that whatever that was, that was one of the best readings I've ever done this month, right? So yeah. it took me uh, it took me about five years. I was a little slow on the uptake. <laughs> five, you know, five years to figure out who I was talking to, and it was the Akashic Masters. Oh my goodness! What so real. that's what created all of this expansion and all of this information and tied it all together. It sounds like too. Yeah, so it, for me, it was kind of a good experience because I I got the difference between me being a so-so intuitive. I'm not saying I was the best psychic anyway, but um, <laughs> you know, but 
but the difference in the information from that realm for my higher self speaking to their higher self and looking at chakras and you know more a little bit more of a classic kind of an intuitive reading to expanding into the high vibration of the akashic field which is literally held in the information arm of source so our akashic records are literally sto- stored written and stored in our um, in in source energy so it's a, the highest vibration that's available i would say right is God or source right. and and that's where this is and then we all have you know these beings of light that are pure um, source energy beings uh, they're our akashic record keepers they're the masters or the teachers the beings of light that keep our record so each person has their very own team of librarians or record keepers and each person literally has their very own library so of course there are huge libraries of the planet of groups of you know all sorts of things that are kind of in the the bigger sense but also each person has their very own library. And they're not small libraries because the truth is we're infinite souls. And we have lived, most of us live here on planet Earth alone for 600 to 800, maybe even up to a thousand lifetimes here on Earth alone. And that's not to mention all the planets and planes, dimensions, the angelic realms, the elemental realms, all the other places we go and live and things we do. Well, that's a lot of time to screw up. So <laughs> I was just going, counting my fingers and toes and going, I've outdone those. Yeah, really. I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of interesting because on the one hand, I, I know that you're talking about the Akashic Records in the most spiritual and positive manner. And on the other hand, it kind of feels, it can feel a little strange that it's kind of like the NSA of the spirit world, that there, there's all these records of every single thing we've done. But I know you put it in the light of it's there to help us. It's there to help us refine our soul, our soul's purpose, our journey, et cetera. Is that how you see it? Absolutely. It really is. So there is... There is no right or wrong. There is no judgment. There is, you know, you can't screw up. Honestly, it's you're playing one big old game. So I have teenagers. I see them often playing these crazy computer games, right, that look very real. So my uh, son... One day I walked into his room and he was playing some, I don't know, war game, right? And it looks like, you know, from their point of view, you kind of see the guns in his hands and the, the, you know, helmet on his head, you know, from his point of view. And he's running around and shooting at things and blood splattering all over and... (laughs) And, you know, I'm like, I, and the Akashic (laughs) Masters, you know, they say to me, that's really the truth of the illusion of life. When you're a soul before you come into a body, you pick just like you do in a game. If you're playing Sims and you're playing, you're saying, I'm going to pick this body, this hair color, this eye color, this family. I'm going to build this house. I'm going to have these many kids. We literally plan a lot of this out before we come in in order for us to learn and grow around certain topics um, that we're ready to learn about about or finish or complete, which is like completing karma. I always see karma is um, completing a cycle, completing some learning or growth. Again, it's not Karma is not punishment. It's not, you know, an eye for an eye. I'm going to put out your eye because you put out mine. It's how do I learn from that experience of having my eye put out that doesn't take retaliation, that doesn't take me putting out someone else's eye. It's really the concept is about growing in the profound way of experiencing love and forgiveness. So there are amazing divine um, light uh, um compassionate beings that that keep our records and are really here to help us grow. So the masters that you work with, they are telling you that we all have our own librarians. We all have our own kind of helpers with this. So, and again, I'm going back to the testimonials I read, which were quite quite profound. Mm -hmm. So what you found, it looks like, and what you're talking about in your book is a way for people 
to access these records. Now, what happens when you access these records? Can you change them or just there to learn from them? What What's the purpose of that? Well, actually both. So the interesting thing is, is that I find that um, we can change them in a, a sense. We can change them if we understand the growth that we came to receive from that learning. And so... Uh, say for an example, um, you're afraid to be seen to get out into the world and be more public, right? So, so, you know, imagine five years ago, maybe Patricia, you said, I would love to have a radio show, but you know, it makes me really nervous. I'm kind of afraid to speak my, my truth on air. And what if people judge me? And what if, you know, what if bad things happen to me? Because, you know, everybody can find me and see me. I'm really public, all of this sort of thing, right? Yeah. And so we would go into your Akashic records, we would open your records, and we would ask your librarians, your beings of light, I, I, I kind of just interchange the names, because there's a whole bunch of them. And we would say, so what is blocking Patricia? from being able to step out in a more public way. And they would probably reel off three, five, ten, who knows, past lives in which you were killed for speaking your truth. Whoa. Yeah, that would stop me. <laughs> right, right. Because it's old stock energy. So this energy, when you get killed, so imagine, of course, I always say the Inquisition went on for 500 years. Oh, I don't know how goodness. many tens of thousands of people died in the Inquisition. Not to mention, you know, what we refer to as witch trials, etc. But, you know, there have been some really harsh years and lives that went on for, a, oh, a good thousand or two thousand years, right? So, yeah, absolutely. so we can we can literally go in or I can. It's one of the things that I teach is to how to heal some of these past lives, free up the old stuck energy, understand and learn that this is not really the truth of who we are. You might have been beheaded five times, but heck, guess what? You're here right now talking to me. You've got a perfectly lovely head right now, right? Yes. So <laughs> we're infinite beings. We are not we do not die. And so when we can kind of really, you know, get that and go, oh, you know what? You're right. I'm safe. No one can ever really kill me. We shift the energy. I use and teach some different energy tools in my live classes to release some of these energies. There are healing prayers in the book that the Akashic Masters have given us to help to clear and release some of this old stuck energy and karma that we have. So we free it up energetically. We bring it into present time. We fill ourselves up with our highest vibrations so that we can come present and get into alignment with what our soul came to do now. Now, when, so, you go, when you go in and you look at someone's records, you either lead them in or you, you see them yourself, is this like actually looking in a book or is this like watching a movie? Um, you know, not neither really. Um, and we're all a little bit different. So everyone is is unique and we all receive information in our own way. Um, I never see it like it's written in a book. I, you know, really be challenged there with finding the right glasses to read that book, right? <laughs> Rose colors, yes. preferably. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So to me, when I literally open the records, everybody, you know, especially newer students kind of have that experience of maybe walking up the steps to a grand library and meeting their masters at the door and walking into this this big library. And, and it serves us as humans, as people with personalities and egos to have these sorts of experiences. But what most students notice is that the energy then starts to kind of flow in how you receive it. So to me, it's almost like when I open the records, I'm standing in the void. So it's just this amazing, spacious, black space, right? And so when a client asks me a question, 
the the akashic beings of light the ma- the akashic masters teachers and and beings of light start to give me information and it may show up very often to me as a snapshot i don't i'm not clairvoyant in the movie sort of the word but i get out of focus snapshots so i always say really can't i have better focus on my clairvoyance what is up with that right <laughs> yeah but, but what the akashic masters told me years ago was that Often I'm shown these these lives, these past lives that are useful to heal and clear, and many of them are not so pleasant. Many of them are kind of gory. You know, all those lives, like we say, we've been burned at the stake, we've been beheaded, drawn and quartered, etc. Lots of lovely, you know, things. So, so they're like, you know, a little out of focus snapshot, it works. You get it, and that's enough. Oh, that's all you need. You don't need to delve into the gore. So... So I see an out-of-focus picture. I get the story. I get it as a knowing. I often hear clairvoyant, clairaudiently, excuse me. Um, sometimes I hear words or messages or, you know, full sentences. A lot of times it's that kind of, you know, download of information where I just know what the whole story is. And then I share that with my clients. And then we ask the masters, what can we finish? What can we complete? What can we release? So what trauma, pain, vows, karma can we let go of from this life that they're ready to release? And we do that energetically as a healing um, and then, of course, because there is no such thing as time and space, really, we can fold that that old um, that old energy that's now been cleared and healed, and we bring it into I always say into this present time, into this body, so that we can reclaim energy and fill ourselves up really with our our own wisdom. Because from all of those lives, we've learned, we've gleaned information, we've we've become more compassionate or more understanding or wise, or there's been tools or or um, or teachings we've had. And so when we can get rid of the junk, the pain, the trauma, the fear, then we can embody the the knowledge and the wisdom. So our records are phenomenally useful for us in that sort of way. That is amazing. And you're such a great bridge between that world and that information and people like us who really want to make changes in our lives for the better and have a deeper understanding of our own lives, our own choices, etc. But you talked about vows. You also talk in the book about contracts. Can you say a little bit about that and how we can, in our lives, get hung up on those things? Mm, Sure. So... They're kind of two topics, so let me just talk. I'll start with vows. Okay. (laughs) Yes, those are the ones that get us in trouble, aren't they? (laughs) They they are often um, real sticking points or blocks for us. So Mm -hmm. one of the vows that I'm really a big advocate of clearing are our vows of poverty. So many, many people now on the planet, especially people who are light workers here, who are here to help and to raise the vibration of the world and all these lovely things, have also been very spiritual in many other lives. And many of us have also been, you know, nuns or monks or priests or, you know, some sort of um, uh, in some sort of religious sect where we've taken a vow of poverty, chastity, celibacy, you know, not so useful really for most of us now. Not at all. (laughs) <laughs> right. at least two of them don't work <laughs> let's get rid of them all i say oh. they're no good for anything You're yeah right. so so these things can be cleared and obviously when you take these vows in whatever lifetime they're probably done very passionately and with a lot of coherence so it may take a lot to get rid of them you know what i really find and and um is that Because the records, again, are part of source energy and the beings of light are pure source. They're not ascended masters. They're not just kind of guides who have died and now they're here to help you. These are literally beings who have not had human experiences. They're just there to guide you. I see. So when we're in this vibration, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> let me let me stop you right here because oh, okay. I, I am hanging on your every word and I know our whole audience is and PK, I know you are too, but we're going to have to take a short break in a few seconds. And I wanted to, again, 
give everybody the phone number in case you want to talk to Lisa tonight. Please call in 888-919, excuse me, 2355. Again, that number is 888-919-2355. Stay tuned, everyone. You are listening to Supernatural Girls Radio, and we will be back in just a couple minutes. Stay tuned. You're listening to IRN, the Inception Radio Network, Chicago, Illinois. forget what's coming up tonight, did you? Hi, Inception Radio Network listeners. This is Amanda. Never miss that interview you were looking forward to or the show on your favorite topic. Follow IRN on Twitter, I underscore, R underscore N, and get reminders about the evening's live shows as well as fun and important updates throughout the week. That's I underscore, R underscore N, and never miss a great show again. Hi, can you hear my voice? Imagine how many other people can hear it, too. If you have advertising needs, then look no further. The Inception Radio Network currently has openings for on-air advertisements and radio show sponsorships. Giving any thought to your target demographic? Inception has you covered there, too. Advertising on a network gives you multiple opportunities to advertise on a wide variety of radio show broadcasts, and we have one to fit every advertising need. You know, in recent years, Internet radio has exhibited a phenomenal listener growth. An Arbitron Edison survey shows that online radio boosts at least 33 million unique visitors each week and 54 million each month. And that number amazingly continues to grow. And these listeners are a part of many businesses' core demographics. And surveys have shown that Internet radio listeners are far more likely than regular radio listeners to spend money on a whole range of activities. You know, Internet listeners vote, they dine out, eat fast food, and they grab a cup of coffee. And here's the interesting one. They buy items online at a much higher rate than all other market segments combined. Internet radio also enables businesses to connect with consumers during work hours, where increasingly more lifestyle decisions are being made. Advertise with the best. The Inception Radio Network offers competitive advertising rates to fit just about anyone's advertising budget. Stop by today at www.inceptionradionetwork.com or call us toll-free at 1-888-919-2355. Get the word out. Get results with the Inception Radio Network. Are you a fan of Inception Radio Network? Do you reckon it's the best alternative talk radio station on the planet? Well, if you do, head to facebook.com forward slash Inception Radio Network and like the page. Tell your friends, spread the word, and keep listening to the best. Hello, Inception Radio Network listeners. This is Amanda. Remember, you can take your Inception Radio shows on the go. Just download the Inception Radio Network app for your iPhone, iPad, or Android smartphones and access live shows, past shows, guest lineups, and much more. Just visit the iTunes Store or the Google Play Marketplace and download it today for free. Welcome back, everyone. You are listening to Supernatural Girls Radio. I am your host, Patricia Baker, and I am here with my co-host, PK, and our fabulous guest, Lisa Barnett, who is the founder of Akashic Knowing School of Wisdom. She is an internationally recognized teacher with more than 20 years of experience in the Spiritual Healing Forum. And she is the author of The Infinite Wisdom of the Akashic Records. Welcome back, everybody. This is a great discussion tonight, full of wonderful and useful information. So, 
Lisa, we're talking about vows and getting rid of them all. And then I, I like that. I like that a lot. PK, I know you want to get rid of any old vows hanging around, too. Hey, listen, if I've been a nun for that long, I want to get rid of them. <laughs> yeah, we got <laughs> got to share with everybody. During the break, we were all talking. And as it turns out, PK may have been a nun for a lot of lives before this one. So, yeah, she needs to get rid of all those. But this is like a lot of vows with a nun thing, isn't there? Isn't that the truth? Oh, goodness. Wow. <laughs> Lisa, we're going to have to be calling you after the show. I can just see it now. So, <clears throat> also, we were talking about contracts. And now, what's the deal with contracts? We come in with some of these things, or do we make them with other people or with other. What do we do with these contracts? <laughs> well, we do. Um, so as a soul, before you come into a body, you really do set up a plan and that plan has to do with some of the contracts. So you say, they give me these really funny, the Akashic Masters are very funny because they're just pure light and love and joy, right? So they give me these silly stories basically and, you know, it's all good to illustrate how we work as a as a soul. So imagine um, you're in a high school gymnasium right? Those, you know, where we play basketball, those squeaky floors. And there's 500 (laughs) souls who are all coming back to earth. So, you know, there you are and you're like, I'm going back to earth and I want to get married. So who wants to marry me? And so you have, you know, 10 hands go up and they're like, one guy says, Hey, remember that lifetime where we were married and I drowned? And so, you know, we didn't get to finish our life together. You want to do it again? You want to try and have a long life? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, let's, you know, let's set that contract. Let's hope that that one works out. We'll finish some karma there. We'll have a nice, you know, um, support and loving contract. And so great. And then somebody else says, you know, Oh, remember when we were married and, and, you know, we were both alcoholics and we beat each other up all the time. Let's try it again. And let's, you know, this time, right? Let's, let's be kind and loving and gentle with each other. You know, let's figure this out and, you know, learn the forgiveness part and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It goes on and on like that. So all of a sudden you have maybe six to 12 contracts for marriage partners or for, you know, part for life partners, however you want to call that. Now, of course, you're not going to marry all 12 of them, but the likelihood of um, some of them being younger than you or older than you when they show up in your life or married or in a different part of the world. So we are all beings of free will, which is a really important concept. So we make these contracts, we write out these um, kind of ideas, we have these purposes, but many of them never come to fruition because we have free will. We get to choose what the heck we really want to do. So we write contracts to have children and sometimes we don't. Um, sometimes I always kind of laugh because I have uh, four children. I gave birth to three of them, but I had obviously four soul contracts with four souls to be their mother. And so um, my son was one and I had twins and my nephew moved in with us. So I went from one to four in a year. God and- bless you. <laughs> And I never would have done that by choice, let me tell you. (laughs) (laughs) I am just not that nice, really, Uh, you know? You seem really sane, so yeah, I would imagine you wouldn't choose that. (laughs) How interesting. Oh my goodness, you went to a big full house in just a a span of 12 months. That's incredibly challenging. It, it's it was. scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was. And still, 20 years later, is challenging some days, I have to say. <laughs> but, yes, but, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So we have these contracts. And, well, let's say we're, we're maybe under these contracts in certain ways. Can we get rid of them? Let's say we're not happy about the way these contracts are working out right now. Can you help people to release themselves from those contracts? Yeah, you know, we really can. So there's a couple of different things that happen. So one thing is that um, 
some are just done. They're complete. We are really done with them, but we're not being very cognizant of that fact that that is complete. So it's like those people who stayed married for 20 years and it really was in their highest interest to get divorced after five, right? Do you have any friends like that? Anybody oh, sure. Else? Just I a sure. few too, right? <laughs> yep. So that's when a soul contract is actually done. So a contract may be, I might have a contract with um, with a partner, in my case, because I'm a woman, it would be a man, to have a child. And once that child is born, and, you know, depending on how the contract is written between me and uh, the sperm donor and, you know, the father and the child, we all write these different kind of contracts, how long he may be staying around and what the contract is about. So some of them are about supporting each other, but some of them are actually about learning, growing, and completing some old karma. So, um, so here's kind of a, an interesting example of that is, um, say, a woman who uh, uh, got pregnant outside of wedlock and not a big deal usually in this day and age right now. But, you know, you imagine 40 years ago, 50 years ago, big deal. The families, you know, you have to you have to um, give the child away or, you know, some sort of thing like that. And so there's an interesting contract that's going on between the mother and the father and the child. And so the father never shows up again. There he was just donating his sperm for one night. And he says, I don't want to get married. I don't want to have kids. I don't want to have anything to do with you. So now the contract is about healing uh, abandonment, working through our own personal um, ability to have self-love and um, step into our own power. So there's all sorts of kind of pieces and contracts and karma that are involved in this experience. So it looks like from the outside, from that child or from whoever, you know, that 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 adult, say now, who's having this experience, my mother was a single mother and my father never showed up again. The person that, you know, why would I pick that? Well, literally, we pick a lot of these things for our own spiritual growth and to learn and to learn to forgive whoever we have to forgive, maybe the father or maybe we don't have to, to forgive ourselves for not being lovable enough for daddy to stay around, right? So each person, each soul would have that a different experience of a similar situation. So if I describe that situation to, you know, 10 people who had, who, you know, had that situation, each would have their own experience of it. And they would probably be working through their own personal karma and, you know, different, different pieces. Right. So, yeah, exactly. You know. Exactly. But let me ask you this about the contract situation. Is anything written in stone? Are there contracts that cannot be broken, that cannot be changed? You know, I always say nothing is written in stone. That's what the Akashic Masters uh, say. And so I'm kind of sticking with that line. Nothing is written in stone. I find it really reassuring. And one of the reasons that nothing is written in stone is because we come here to have free will. And yes. so yes, there really true. isn't, right, there's no predestination. It is not, it has to be this way. We are, we come to have choice to learn and grow. So there's any moment you could wake up and say, oh, I get it. I am just pure divine love. I'm in an infinite, huge, wise, ancient soul. And I love everyone. Right. We can just be over the whole thing in a moment or we can struggle and complain and feel like we're victims. And, you know, because that, you know, we didn't have a father, whatever our story is. Right. Yeah. We so, know how much fun that is. So <laughs> <laughs> no fun at all. Well, look, we've got a question for you from the chat room. It looks like American Road Warrior has written in. They would like to know about how the Akashic Records show up. Uh, on the other side. So I know you have, we've already discussed this with you, but for some people, do they show up as pictures attached to a wall or do they come through in dreams? H how are the different ways that people might perceive the Akashic Records? 
Well, you know, we can literally access the Akashic Records in quite a few different ways. And so I would say, yes, a lot of people actually have very um, profound prophetic dreams. We receive messages and information often in our dreams. Um, many people have been taught to access the Akashic Records using um, a guided meditation Edgar Casey, who was the famous sleeping prophet back in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, accessed the Akashic Records by going into a very deep sleeping hypnotic trance. And he had his wife asking questions and a secretary writing the answers. And so he could go really deep into the records because he was not conscious. He was not there consciously. Right. Yeah, he was so, amazing. Yeah. So, you know, everybody can, you know, really have their own experience of it. I teach people to use a vibrational key, which is a sacred prayer to access the records. But again, each person is very um, unique. And so some people are very clairvoyant. Some people get movies. Some people see like me, you know, just an image, a snapshot, just um, some people get really hear like a whole story, like someone speaking to them. Most of us are clear audience, which is the, the hearing channel. <laughs> you know, we hear in our heads like it's us. So the biggest issue for most of us is that all the messages we receive sound like us. And so we have a lot of doubt, right? Oh, yes. That's for sure. So, <laughs> oh, yes. Who is that really talking? Is that I me or is my imagination? Or, yeah, exactly. Right. So the, pra the prayer helps a lot, I would Sorry. imagine, with uh, the focus on this. So when you say your prayer, you have a lot of really beautiful prayers in your book. And again, the name of Lisa's book is The Infinite Wisdom of the Akashic Records, available on Amazon.com. And I'm sure at your local bookstores also. But the prayers are helpful because it's a frequency and it sets you up to walk right through the door. That is absolutely the um, the idea. So that's, yeah, wonderfully said. So as we say these prayers, the one, you really only need one vibrational key to open, unlock and open that, that Akashic door to your personal library. And what I would say is, is that most of us feel the energy shift. We notice the vibration raising, whether... Um, some new students get teary eyed, you know, they feel the love because again, it's first energy. People feel their hearts open and expand. It's really beautiful. And then, um, and then we start to learn to ask questions and receive information and gain clarity. So one of the reasons that couple reasons. There's usually no, never one reason in the Akashic Records for anything. But one, one of the reasons that I wrote the book is the Akashic Masters told me to. It was one of the reasons. But the other reason was <laughs> I do what they tell me. So I, um, I would too. <laughs> <laughs> they have the key. <laughs> that's, that's right. And I always say everybody's Akashic Masters are super, super nice and they're funny, except for mine. They yell at me all the time. Oh, they're my, just very minor pair very pushy. <laughs> so. so you have to follow their prime directive or else. Yeah, right. Or they keep, you know, pushing and yelling and, you know, come on, you said you would, right? Oh, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> what was I thinking when I made that vow? Really? Yeah, really. <laughs> really. Well, you're a wonderful channel for all of this. And now here's a question for you about illness. There's a lot of people today that are dealing with some degree of illness, some more than others. And do you find a lot of that is tied into past lives and their records from the past? You know, that's a great question. Um, and of course, there's always, you know, numerous answers. I would say that the masters usually answer all questions with, you know, two to five answers. There's there's levels and layers of information in our record. So it's always interesting. Past life trauma does 
play in for some people, certainly, especially what I'll notice is weaknesses in the body and pain in the body. I'll sometimes see an arrow or a sword or a knife or something in people's backs or shoulders or, you know, sides or whatever. And it's interesting because when I go back into that past life and clear and heal and release that energy and that trauma from that body, it comes forward into this time and people will be like, wow, that's great. That doesn't hurt anymore, you know. So that can be it. A lot of what I see with illness, honestly, is um, uh, kind of the stuffed emotions, people who are really not um, working through their their emotional challenges or really paying much attention to their emotions. So that often will get stuck in a body and start to manifest. And one of the challenges for us as humans, once things come down into this kind of dense um, physical plane that we live in, once they come down into the body and manifest as that energy, you know, of an illness, um, it's a little more work, you know, to to get rid of it. Or some, for some of us, it's a lot more work to get rid of it. So I really recommend to people to deal with your issues, deal with your emotions, work things through, clear them energetically, do energy healing, do, you know, all of the different kinds of tools. I teach a lot of different tools to he- heal and clear uh, as well as, you know, great simple tools like tapping, you know, EFT or things Mm -hmm. to help us release that energy out of the body. And in the book, if you got all the way towards the end, I'm sorry, I I don't know the page number offhand, but there's a great um, uh, exercise process that the Akashic Masters gave us to actually um, we ask, there's a great list of, of, um, of emotions, about 20 or so emotions. And we would say, where am I holding this, say, jealousy in my body? And the Akashic Masters tell you, you know, you're holding that jealousy in your liver, say. And you say, okay, what can I know about that? Where does it come from? What can we clear and release? What prayers to use? You know, what healing tools to use? And we literally go through them and clear them out of the body to help release and get rid of these so they don't turn into dis-ease in the physical form. Well, I agree with you 100%. I think emotional trauma and holding that inside and not having the tools to work through it is a huge problem that contributes to illness on every level. So it's, again, wonderful. You have these exercises you can work with people on, and certainly people can buy your book and just do them the just themselves. It's an important thing. I always say emotions are like rocket fuel. And if you don't know about rocket fuel, it's pretty volatile. One drop can make a huge explosion. And that's how our emotions are. And I find so many people just don't have that level of EQ, that emotional intelligence to be able to handle their own emotions. It's so ironic. Isn't that one of the biggest reasons we come here is to have emotions? And then we spend our lives, you know, pushing them down. and Trying to undo them, huh? <laughs> yeah, and saying, we don't have that. I'm not feeling that. You know, I'm not going to feel that. I'm not going there. So it's just such a funny uh, irony, I think, in our human existence. One of the things in the book that I found interesting was the energy release of the grace point. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And I, I, I find it fascinating that something as simplistic as that could do so much. Yeah, it really does. Did you actually get to uh, give it a try, PK? Did you? Yes, I did. Play with this a little. Did you feel that? Did you feel your heart? Yes, open I did. And That's ex- why I brought it up because and, I'm just yeah. quite surprised. You know, <laughs> yeah, we, we test the waters, but we're always doing it with kind of a uh uh-huh. until <laughs> when it works. We go, oh wow, look at this. <laughs> You know, I I am exactly the same way. (laughs) I'll be keeping your book in my purse for quite some time until I learn how to remember some of these things a little bit more often. (laughs) Oh, lovely. Yes. So it is a um, it is a point on the palm and it really connects to the heart meridian and it helps us to open and expand our heart. So when we do that, when we open our heart, it helps us receive information with more clarity. So when you're working in your Akashic Records, if you want to get um, more, better, deeper information, that helps to hold that grace point. It also helps us to 
um, integrate uh, joy, love, fun, you know, good things into our body. So we're literally energetically bringing them deeply into our heart. And from there, we can integrate them really on a cellular level. So that's beautiful. And, um, you know, as well as, of course, opening our hearts so we can let go of and release old stuff, stuck yep. stuff. So, yeah, it, one little grace point, one simple tool, um, three uses, and very, very um, deep and profound and helpful in, mm -hmm. you know, all three of these kind of ways. Terrific. Just terrific stuff. And again, it's simple. It, there's nothing so complicated here. Everybody can get your book and learn how to do these things. Or they can also schedule a private session with you. Now, how can people find you, Lisa? So they can find me on my website, which is akashicknowing.com. And I assume you'll have that on a page. Is that right? Or mm -hmm. so Akashic is not the easiest word to spell. That's so, <laughs> why I right. I'm like A K A S H I C Akashic Knowing K N O W I N G dot com. So AkashicKnowing dot com. There's lots of information about scheduling um, a consultation and a healing with me about live classes. I do if you like to do them. I'm in San Francisco. If you want to come here. Um, and, you know, do it in person or I do them on the telephone, on, on uh, in, you know, on instant teleseminar. So clients all over the world, it's very fun to be able to connect and teach people in, in all these different ways. So, um, yeah, all that information is at AkashicKnowing.com. Excellent. Fabulous. Yes. Now, I also wanted to get to some of the big issues for people, and we kind of touched on them a little bit at the beginning of the show. But certainly abundance, money, financial security, those are huge issues for people today. So how do you help people with that? Well, a couple of different ways. Of course, when I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, that's very useful to really be able to look in their records and see the past lives. Um, so we look at all these past lives in which you have, say, a vow of poverty. That's one thing. We look at past lives. We also kind of the opposite side of the coin, which is what we come to do. We come to do it all, right? That's why it takes us hundreds of lives. But Many of us, or I would probably, you know, venture to guess that most people have some sort of life in which they were very, very rich and the money um, somehow made them miserable. So often either they were not very nice because they were really rich, they might have been very stingy or greedy, and they may have died alone. And so on their deathbed, um, there they were saying, I never want to be rich again. That was terrible. Here I am, rich with nothing but a you know bunch of old metal, you know, right? It may be gold, <laughs> who cares? But there's no one to hold my hand or to care for me as I'm dying, right? So a lot of charge and energy when we make these vows on our deathbed definitely is very strong. Yes, and, goodness. Yeah. So gonna that's, me a, I'm going to write me a note. Don't say this. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> No, no oh, kidding, you know. I will say I love money. <laughs> and money loves me, so I never have to deal with poverty again. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting thing how people have an experience of life of poverty or scarcity or the opposite, and it still isn't a happiness factor here. Mm -hmm. So it's great to know that all of these things can be changed through working with the Akashic Records. That's just, it's an amazing tool that you're giving to all of us. It's just terrific. I'm so happy to hear this empowering information. Gosh. Now, another big hot button for everybody is our soulmates. Mm -hmm. So I know you talked about there's many choices of people we could marry, uh, spend our lives with. I uh, have children with whatever, and then we make some choices, but everybody still has free choice. What about this whole soulmate issue? Tell us about that. What do you find? Well, a couple of things, but one, I don't, 
I, I tend to say soul family more than soulmate because soulmate makes us believe that there's one other half to us that we're searching for that needle in the haystack sort of thing. And it's not really true because we have hundreds or thousands of um people from our soul family. And many of those are the ones that we write contracts with. Again, this is why we write a dozen or so contracts to have that wonderful, supportive, loving, caring relationship. Because, you know, who knows where where that one, you know, if we just had one soulmate, the likelihood that we'd all stay single would be really great. <laughs> yeah, <say>. right. <laughs> well, we got we to gotta run and take a break now, Lisa, but we're going to come back and talk more about Soulmates, if you've got a question for Lisa, call up at 888-919-2355. Stay tuned, everybody. You're listening to Supernatural Girls Radio, and we will be right back. You're listening to IRN. The Inception Radio Network, Chicago, Illinois. Hi, Inception Radio Network listeners. This is Amanda. Just a reminder that Inception Radio Network is on Twitter. Follow us at I underscore R underscore N and keep up to date about who's on tonight, what interviews they'll be doing, who's guest spotting, what topics they'll be covering. Tweet to us, tweet about us, retweet topics to your friends, and most importantly, never miss a great show again. That's I underscore R underscore N. computer is your internet connection down don't worry use your trusty cell phone or landline and call into our listen line at 401-283-6700 to listen to the inception radio network 24 7 again that call-in number is 401-283-6700 for the inception radio network i am mj Hello, Inception Radio Network. Would you like your favorite show to be played again live on air? Well, now the choice is in your hands. With IRN's live request portal, an easy way to request your favorite show with a simple click. IRN's live request portal now gives you exclusive access to all the shows. How easy is it? Simply type a show name or a guest name, click request, even write a dedication message, and that's it. Try it now. Simply visit InceptionRadioNetwork.com. Click on the Live Request tab under the Show menu. Now playing your favorite show is just a mouse click away. Are you a fan of Inception Radio Network? Do you reckon it's the best alternative talk radio station on the planet? Well, if you do, head to Facebook.com forward slash Inception Radio Network and like the page. Tell your friends, spread the word, and keep listening to the best. Welcome back, everyone, to Supernatural Girls Radio. I am your host, Patricia Baker. I'm here with my co-host, PK, and our great guest, Lisa Barnett, who is the author of The Infinite Wisdom of the Akashic Records. And we are talking about soulmates or soul families is where we left off. So, Lisa, please tell us more about that. Absolutely. So the interesting thing about soul families and, you know, they're useful to find also because many of us feel like we're, you know, maybe from another planet or we don't really fit in or, you know, that uh, that family we were born to just doesn't get us. Right. And oh, part yeah. of the, yeah, you're right. so part of the reason <laughs> that that is, is because um, they're not our soul families. We may have a, a contract with them to be born into that family. But the reason that we have these contracts really can vary. So we want to find our soul family or a bunch of, you know, people from that. So that's what we would often refer to as like really like-minded souls. And those are the people that we feel really close to, you know, when you meet them, you're like, oh, I feel like I've known you for 
ever, you know, it's so amazing. And, you know, yes. I, I, right. We love, love, love that. I've met a bunch of my soul family scattered around the world. So it's fun. You know, I've got them in, in right. Italy and, and Argentina and, uh, you know, different States around Mexico all over. So it's great to have people to go visit anyway. <laughs> but so, so the way it works out in the very beginning, when we very first decide to individuate from source, the very first time we come in as a group. So we were born in a little basket, you know, imagine there's a little basket full of little baby souls and there we are, maybe there's 20 <laughs> of us and, you know, we're That's like, so cute. Yeah. So cute. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so we're like, yay, let's go explore, explore the universe, right? And we go and we do that together. So we start out with this group and we have we have friends. We've got our soul family, right? These are our buddies. And we have these experiences and we grow and we do all sorts of very amazing and kind of crazy things. We create worlds. We live on those planets. And as we go along, we also were huge souls when we start out. So it's like, I want to go live on that planet, but my soul is so big. My energy field is so big. I have to break into a bunch of parts so I can fit like a soul into that little, you know, that little body on the planet. So we actually start to kind of each soul, and this is kind of the concept of a soulmate, in the concept of soulmate, a soul splits into two, and so we're often looking for that other half. But the way the Akashic Masters tell us is that we are... Um, uh, we're we're actually breaking into ten pieces or a hundred pieces and sometimes even a thousand pieces, and so our our soul family starts to grow in these really you know kind of big ways. So maybe we start out with twenty five and now we're at five thousand by the time we're finishing our you know, 800 lives here on earth. So the nice thing is, of course, we're not all embodied at the same time. Some of our soul family may even be on the angelic realm being our angel guardians or, or you know, watching out from other places. Maybe there are, you know, our pets. I My dog is a part of my soul family, I have to say. She and I have run around together many different times. Um, and so all of these are 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 people we want to find and work with. Now, the bigger deal to me is to find those that soul family member that I have a support contract with, that I have a contract for them to support me and for me to support them. Those are the easiest, happiest, most joyful relationships when we're in kind of um, consciousness as support. Okay, well, here's the thing. Guess what? We have a caller who has a question and a comment, and she actually wants, it's Carol from California. We're going to welcome her to the show. She wants to discuss a personal Akashic experience with a lost dog. Who has a question? Carol, welcome mm -hmm. to the show. And she Hello, thank you, Patricia. Patricia and Lisa, what a great show this is. Um, I had an experience about a decade ago with finding a lost dog. I was dropping my daughter off for high school early in the morning, and I saw a gorgeous creature heading north, opposite direction of which I was going, on a very busy street. So I made the requisite U-turns and got to the point where I could actually get out of my car, park it safely, and grab this dog. She came up to me immediately. She was gorgeous. She was um, a husky. She was a Samo uh, not a hus not a Samoyed, but a husky, we just determined later, with the help of a vet, which is part of the story and I had having parked my car safely I took her by the leash or actually by the collar I made a makeshift leash out of something I found in my trunk and I took her door to door in the area sort of adjacent to which I was seeing her nobody recognized her she was gorgeous they all said oh what a beautiful dog she had the one blue eye that apparently is sometimes a husky characteristic I later found out that was connected to something called a spirit dog which is a Native American thing. At any rate, I took her door to door and all everybody agreed that she was gorgeous, but they did not recognize her. So I took her home. And my son, who had a late start day that day at the high school, looked out the front door and he said, uh, Mom, why is there a wolf in the car? 
<laughs> which was kind of hilarious because, you know, that is what she looked like. And she was sitting up in the front seat. So I took her out and I took her, you know, not knowing the, the following that she was a bounder. Um, and, I, and that's why I found her. But I took her by the collar into the house and we had her 24 hours, you know, the next day. I, I did everything I could to try to find out who this dog belonged to. Um, finally, the second vet we took her to discovered a chip, a microchip implant in her shoulder. So we were halfway home and we found out that she had been second time around given to an owner who lived a block to the north uh, east of us and uh, the owner was um, a professor of computers at Harvey Mudd College and was so incredibly grateful that, that I was able to contact her and get this dog back to her and I said to her because we all fell absolutely in love with her and her name was Sierra I said if there's ever any circumstance where you can't keep this dog um, please let us know and blah 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 well we ended up with Sierra but but the point is here, on that morning when I found her without a conscious bunch of information, although definitely I'm a reader and an interested person in such, I had no uh, past application of the Akashic record and my life. As I was taking her door to door, what subconsciously came into my mind from some place I don't know was, where does this fit in the Akashic record? Well, upon upon linking up to her uh, owner, who was her second owner because she had a habit of bolting, we found out um, some interesting things. The woman who was the professor of computers at Harvey Mudd College had grown up living probably six blocks away from me in Michigan, in Grand Rapids, Michigan, in a city called Wyoming, which was white, oh, right over a 13-acre huge field in which I used to play and walk and sing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there was some incredible reason or connection or something to do with this dog. Do you find that, Lisa, with people and animals? Interesting. Well, <laughs> you know, sometimes, so the animal can show up in all these different ways. So, I mean, literally, you know, did you become friends, Carol, with this woman? Did you become no, good friends? A actually, we did not. In fact, I happened upon her uh, one day when I was walking Sierra, and this was interesting. I took Sierra in a route we usually didn't walk, and boom, there was the station wagon, and there was the previous owner, whose name was Z, and it was Carol, Sierra. I thought I'd run into you someday, and that was just about it, you know. She's gone now. Sierra's gone now. But uh, we had her for, I don't know, eight years, and, and they were eight incredible years. She was a really unique creature. Well, and and so I can't help but – oh, I'm sorry. But I just can't help but feel that there was some – some interesting connection, some purpose in the fact that the woman who had, from whom Sierra had escaped lived so close to me, so far away across the country. Right. Well, that's why I'm surprised you didn't become friends, because, you know, what I'm feeling is that is that this beautiful dog as a, you know, as a guide, as a as a helper was trying to connect you to someone in your soul family, someone you really had. Um, I, you know, I'm feeling like some very intense work to do together. If you had been able to come together, spend some time together, get to know each other. Um, heal some maybe childhood or relive some of your childhood fun mm. and passion and joy. And so it's true that um, that there are many different ways that that we get connected to our soul family. Sometimes it's what appears to be an accident, like a dog connects us or right. we happen to bump into someone abstractly in some other country, right, while we're traveling, and we become good friends because it turns out back home, we live down the street from each other. So right, there, right. it's soul family. It would be like looking and saying, how do I as a soul connect to soul family? And and there are many other energies and beings and, and guides. And what I find with um, our pets, not always, but many times, like I just mentioned that um, – my little nine-pound Maltese poodle is yes. quite a, a little warrior girl, and she is a healer. So she'll she'll get down on the ground and bark and bark and bark 
if there's some energies or, or entities that are to be cleared and released. So um, these these beautiful animals are very often really otherworldly little beings that have come to help us and to heal us or show us or connect us to others or connect to, uh, you know, connect us to them. So yes, um, yes. that would be, and so of course you could do an Akashic Record reading. I'm, I'm not in your records. I'm just in the vibration of the group records. But you, if you did a really personal reading, you know, like with me or you learned to access your own Akashic Records, you could ask for a lot more inf- information about what soul contract did you have with the dog? What soul contracts did you have with Z? What, what else could you know about this situation? So literally, you could go much deeper into, um, into that if you opened your own Akashic Records. Oh, that's fascinating. Thank you so much for this. This this has been an incredible program. Lots of information. Well, thank thank you you so much for your call, Carol. We appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, guys. Keep on keeping on. You are touching a lot of people. Oh, thank you. That's good. Thank you. That's our goal. So, oh, my goodness. Well, Lisa, the other issue that I know you help people with a lot is business. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? How do you help people with their businesses or starting a business? It seems like it's a big part of your practice. You know, it really is. And it's something um, it's something that I find is so useful for so many people, because the truth is, is that we all have our soul purposes and we have things our soul wants to do, right? And it's rarely kind of, it's, you know, it's never like a a job description, but many of us have become to be healers or teachers or guides or channels or wise, you know, women or men and, and to share some information you know, I mean, of course, we've come to also bring information and wisdom from other worlds, from other past lives that we've had, knowledge we have um, to to write and, and to give, you know, a lot of this kind of information to the world, to raise the vibration of the planet, etc. So when we can be on task doing the work that our soul came to do, one way to make that happen with more ease is to have these conversations with our Akashic Masters. So, you know, I say that my Akashic Masters, even though they yell at me and they're very pushy, it's great, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it works for me because they tell me what to do. They say, start a school and write a book. And I say, yeah, okay, sure. How? And they tell me exactly how to write that book. Or they'll say, it's time to write a new program. Or, you know, here's some new healing prayers for the world. The the vibration of the planet has raised. And so I'm getting regular information from my Akashic Masters about next steps to take with my business. So, you know, that's how it works for me. But a lot of clients will come to me and they'll say, you know, I have um, two or three choices, which is in in alignment with my soul. What's the highest and best for me to do? So when we open our Akashic Records, we can look at all of that. Do I have a contract with this person to work with them? Is there karma to complete or lessons to learn? And is it going to be easy, fun and graceful? Or is this going to, you know, is this partnership going to create some, you know, trauma or around some old karma, right? So yeah, right. What, when, we ha- when we have that information, it's much easier to make a right wise, guided choice instead of just, you know, hit or miss, right? So that makes a lot of sense because how many people, I mean, we have gotten so many phone calls when we do readings, like when PK does the numerology readings, how many people call in about their job situation, PK? It's almost, oh, I would say, definitely. 80%. Yeah. Well, and they don't know what to do. Variety. Yes. <laughs> Right. So it's so perfect when we're at a crossroads. I have people who say, I'm looking for a job. What's blocking me? We can go again, look at our childhood, our beliefs, our our hidden beliefs, all of the um, 
collective conscious beliefs we have that we don't even know about. And all of these different pieces and parts we can work with even when we're working on abundance. So we talked about some past life vows, but again, with abundance or with business, you know, our ancestral lineage has an effect on how we think. What our parents said to us as children can still be affecting the way we think or believe and maybe whether we feel capable of of charging or charging enough for our um, information of the work that we're doing. So all of these pieces, again, whether it's bringing more abundance into our lives or connecting to a soul partner or really um, making the highest and best choice for our business, there's always these layers. What part can I know? What more information can I know about this? What can I complete? How can I move forward? Is this person, you know, the highest and best business partner for me or am, is this company in alignment with my soul and my soul path? Did I come to work in this corporate company so that I can teach some higher level awareness or awakening, right? So there's many, many pieces of everything we do. And one of the things that's really fun to know and realize is that, again, when we go back and we think, oh, I've had 500 lifetimes. Well, you, each person has strings of lifetimes, which, whoop, strings of lifetimes, which I call um, uh, soul lineage. And what that does is those are kind of the high lives that are there for us to um, to connect to and information that gives us wisdom. So when we connect into our high lives, into our soul lineage, that informs us very often partly about our soul path and what we came to do and the gifts we have to share with others. This is very comprehensive. It almost seems like finding your purpose in what kind of a business you should be doing and with whom touches on almost everything else. So it's very comprehensive when somebody does a business consultation with you. Yes, it can be very comprehensive. And, you know, like everything, you know, I always say, I would love to heal your life in an hour. And I actually do a pretty good job at at it because (laughs) I'm a pretty intense healer, you know, but depending on where we are and what we've come to work on and what we've come to learn. And, you know, sometimes it's about step by step by step because often people have, you know, bigger issues or really strong and intense beliefs. So, you know, sometimes it's a process. Sometimes I work with clients more than once or teach them to access the records and work with them a little bit. So, you know, there is phenomenal comprehensive, you know, information in our records. But again, you know, you have a whole library, so you can't read a whole library in a day, which is one of the reasons I love to do, you know, continuing work with clients or teach people to access the records so they can be empowered and use this empowerment tool to guide their own lives. It's wonderful. I'm so impressed, really, Lisa, with everything that you're doing to help people. It's an amazing gift that you have personally. But, I mean, my goodness, you can help people on so many levels. And it's exciting work. It's fascinating work. I love this ability you have to help people clear. It's, we need to get clear. We really do. It's, it's, we don't want to carry this stuff around anymore. We really don't. Now we've got another caller. We've just got a few more minutes to wrap up this incredibly fascinating discussion, but we do have a caller on the line. Her name is Bernadette and she is calling from Tucson, Arizona. Welcome Bernadette to the show. Do you have a question for Lisa? Mm -hmm. Um, Well, I saw you guys were talking about illnesses and things of that nature, and um, I just wanted to make sure I'm I'm an insulin-dependent diabetic, and there's a lot of goals that myself and my husband have planned, so I just want to make sure that part of of my life isn't going to be dramatically affected by my illness. Lisa, are you able to tune into anything with that? Um, you know, honestly, I'm, I'm having a little bit of a challenge just hearing, um, and what I understood you say is that you're a diabetic and you're wondering if this is really going to affect your life. Is that what I understood? 
Um, we just want to make sure that it's not going to affect anything that we have planned. We're planning on having a couple more children. We just don't know how much of that is going to be affected by my diabetes. Mm, mm. You know, the interesting thing about the records, again, is that um, – because we nothing is written in stone, it really does have so much to do with our own personal choices. So what I'm hearing is is that you have a beautiful, beautiful, strong and expansive light that you have come to share with many and that, you know, can certainly include many children Um and so then again, you know, of, you know, we come here to to make our own choices and to be beings of free will. So, of course, as long as you continue making the highest and best choices for you physically, you know, and emotionally, energetically, I hear no, that that won't affect you, that you will be able to share your love and your light with many. That's good. That's good. Because we've been trying for a while already and we're getting discouraged. <laughs> Mm. Well, Bernadette, that's a beautiful message that you just got from Lisa. So much good luck to you and may God bless in your journey. Yes. Thank you for your call, Bernadette. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, ladies. Have a good night. Oh, you too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Bye. Sometimes we try much too hard and that creates the problem in itself. Well, you know, and this is what the other thing I would say about our records is, is that, you know, they often give us information just the way they were sharing with Bernadette, which is um, you have come to share your love and your light with many. And that may include children, but that also doesn't mean that they have to be children that came through your own body. Right. That's right. So that may be children that you adopt. They may be children that you teach. Maybe you work at a, a school or a preschool or you teach um, workshops with kids or art or something fun like that with children. Um, and so there's many, many different ways. And often as people, we we kind of see that one, the, the, the one um, idea, the one concept that we have, right, um, which is that I want to have kids, you know, and that means I'm going to give birth to them. But um, that's not the truth of who we are because we are so expansive. And so, yeah, a lot of the times when we let go, as we know, um, we've heard this story so many times, someone adopts and then, of course, they're immediately pregnant because they quit yes, working at right. it or trying, right? So right, true. right. Yeah, that happens all the time. Exactly. Right. right. Well, Again, Lisa, it's been just a fascinating discussion with you. And again, the title of your book for everybody listening is The Infinite Wisdom of the Akashic Records. The author is our wonderful guest, Lisa Barnett. And Lisa, would you give your website again so people can find you in case they want a personal private reading or to join one of your classes? I would love to. It is akashicknowing.com, a.k.a. S H I C K N O W I N G dot com. Akashic Knowing dot com. You can find all sorts of information. You can find my guided meditations, my classes, my consultations. I do um, 30 minute and 75 minute consultations with clients and business consultations and personal consultations and teach classes. So lots and lots of, of great information there. And um, you, I look forward it to meeting them. Yep. Yes. Well, you do it all, Lisa. Thank you so much. And now next week we are going to be back again and we're going to be talking about a very unusual alien hybrid story. And we're bringing on along with our guest, our very own Becky Andreessen, UFO abductee. This mm. is going to be a very spirited discussion about alien hybrids and abductions and UFOs. You are not going to want to miss that. And so in the meantime, everybody, thank you so much for listening. You've been listening to Supernatural Girls Radio. And we will see you on the Blue Highway. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night.